I have to talk about Signalis. I can't stop thinking about it. One might say I'm besessen, that's German for obsessed or possessed. I completed it in one 24 hour sitting, much like I would have tackled a game as a child or a young adult. It's rare that a video game can suck me in so intensely, force me to run to YouTube to search for more information and lore, listen to the official soundtrack while I run, and keep me thinking about it when I try to sleep at night, but Signalis did. I won't be on camera for this video. I want the focus to be on the magnetic, even if disturbing, imagery of Signalis. As always, spoilers ahead. Es tut mir leid, aber mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut. Ich bin lerne. For my English viewers, I just told my German-speaking viewers that my German isn't so good, but I've been learning for the last two years and I'm trying. Unfortunately, I don't know any Japanese, Chinese, or Korean, which I've heard are also seen in the game. Where do we start? I'm going to put this out there as simply as I can. If you're nostalgic for Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or Parasite Eve, you owe it to yourself to play Signalis. We'll expand upon that, but I needed to say it. If you're a Blade Runner, Evangelion, or Dune fan, I'd also highly recommend this title. It reminded me so much of a title I haven't heard anyone else associate it with yet, and that's Beyond the Black Rainbow. If you haven't checked that movie out, do so. This video is going to be a little bit different than my previous ones. Not only do I always try to look for an approach that interests me, but I also don't want to try to fit Signalis into a box. I want to look at one of the themes of Signalis that struck me so personally, and that is the recurring motif of memory. I played through Signalis only one time before writing about it. It plagued me so intensely that I had no choice but to grab the pen. Furthermore, I didn't even run to try the game again once I'd finished. I did something totally uncharacteristic. I watched my footage while I wrote. In between feverishly laying down my thoughts, I ran through the game on survival mode. I felt drawn to my gameplay footage like I needed to watch the story unfold in slow motion and nitpick the details I'd already seen so that when I played through again I'd be able to concentrate on more difficult gameplay as I continued to dig deeper into the story. I always look at my footage when I play video games and write an essay, but this was the first time I was scrutinizing that footage for information while trying to align it with my thoughts. Because of the untraditional narrative, we won't be looking at structure this time, particularly because of the varied endings, but also because I feel this need to preserve the sanctity of user interpretation. I don't want to try to break down Signalis, not yet at least. When it comes to the presentation, Signalis is structurally and narratively defiant in a Lynchian, Herzogian, Lovecraftian way. We will, however, talk a little bit about genre, character, and story. Signalis makes you work for the story, and maybe that's part of its charm. For now, I still want to be wrapped up in it rather than try to identify it. This is not a review, but I won't hesitate to say it may become a love letter. So where do I start? Let's begin with the most overwhelmingly powerful nostalgia trigger I think we can all agree on. Have you ever heard the term dirty indie? This is a term often used in the film world to describe an independent piece of art that is scrappy, perhaps made fast and loose, but attention grabbing no less. It can go up against other award-worthy films and hold its own, maybe even doing so on a fraction of the budget of a major production. When well received, they're often referred to as indie darlings. Signalis is that and more, so much more. It's the dirty indie of survival horror, and I don't mean dirty in a bad way, though its tone and subject material certainly might suggest otherwise, but dirty in a good way. This game is an unbelievable effort by a small group. The title was created and developed by Rose Engine, a two-person team consisting of Barbara Whitman and Yuri Stern. Additional talent was brought on to help with score, quality control, and finalization. To think that such a small group of people executed such a fleshed out and polished idea is astonishing. Is Signalis true survival horror? You bet it is, but it also involves the aesthetics and elements of dystopian science fiction and psychological horror to a large degree. I won't elaborate on the anime elements because I'm just not as well versed in them, but they're certainly present. It's no secret this game is influenced by books like The King in Yellow and the tales of H.P. Lovecraft, and I wouldn't dare go into all the nuances for fear of my thoughts going as rampant as those of the characters in the story. Signalis is incredibly genre focused. Seemingly all of its elements are tied into this identity. Controls, items, tone, atmosphere, resource management. Everything is genre and story motivated. Medical supplies patch synthetic parts and seem believable within the framework of the story and genre. 
you won't be mixing and ingesting mysterious herbs in this world. The individual characteristics of replica units provide not only backstory as to their quirks and personalities, but also their durability and battle strengths. To read about the other replica designs is to understand not only the world, but also your approach to managing them. If inventory management has always been its own unique challenge in survival horror games, then it is a Herculean effort in Signalis. So often I found myself overloaded or unable to acquire something I needed so desperately. Is it punishing at times? Surely. But it also compelled me to think about my intentions more as well as plan. I was just as panicked I didn't have the right loadout as I was about stepping into a dark room and knowing I'd have to tune my radio to the right frequency to dispatch enemies efficiently. The game establishes the rule of six early on and it's not just an arbitrary challenge, it's a result of the mass surveillance world in which Signalis exists. I was constantly struggling with whether or not I should destroy or avoid an enemy, but I'm sure I'll become better at that as I continue to play it. I made it through quite a bit of my initial playthrough while dodging enemies, only to discover that this behavior would affect the outcome of my ending. Is this survival horror reinvented? Maybe refined. Signalis didn't scare me, but it did make me feel the dread and tension I so associate with Silent Hill. That discomfort that makes me uneasy about moving forward or entering an area that's just a little too dark to feel safe. I felt anxiety about progressing with the wrong equipment and suffering the consequences. Signalis teaches you this might be a bad idea, but gameplay and visual tone can only take players so far, and the incredible score is there to complement everything that is great about Signalis. One thing that really intrigued me was how the game breaks the third person view every so often, which allows the player a first person perspective in story focused moments that coerce the player to pay attention. If you like story as much as I do, you'll want to pay attention. The narrative presented is one of great depth. I'll spare you a deep dive into the world of Signalis because if you're here, you probably already have an idea of what's happened or are still considering playing it and want some degree of surprise. That being said, let's do a quick refresher so we can take a look at the story in broad terms. We start off as Elster, an LSTR android replica unit and companion to a gestalt, or human, aboard the Penrose, a Yuzon's people's navy vessel searching the universe for resources. In the tradition of the genre, we're led to uncover much of the story through exploration and document inspection. Nothing about this plot is force-fed to the player. Right from the start, the game sets a tone of isolation that creates a sense of unease. It's effective and prompts the player to begin asking questions right away. The vessel has malfunctioned and Elster has been stranded on a snowy planet that only amplifies the sensation of loneliness. Elster's personality is stoic, which works quite well with the text on screen format, but it's also explained through files that reveal her characteristics. She's not just the cool and quiet type, she's designed that way. What does our main character want and need? The first real plot prompt comes in the form of a photograph. Elster wants to find the woman in that photograph. As far as her need, I'm going to leave this vague. Let's just say over the course of the story, she's forced to navigate the responsibility of a promise. As Elster continues to explore the world outside of the vessel, the true horror begins. She discovers that the replica units have succumbed to some terrifying disease and have transformed into monstrous creatures. But are they the most terrifying things Signalis has to offer? Uncovering the story will reveal psychological and thematic trauma more terrifying than any undead monster with a weapon. What types of themes are explored within the story? Here are some. Totalitarianism, obedience, dystopia, censorship, sacrifice, deindividuation, war, memory, art, and love. All of these take shape in the form of world building that paints a wonderful, even if terrifying, view of a world in which replica units have been engineered by humans to serve humans. Elster will trek further down into a subterranean mine where the world becomes more hellish with every floor traversed. Through her exploration, she'll uncover information through NPCs and documents. There is a lot of reading in Signalis, seemingly more than any Resident Evil title. Signalis is asking you to discover its story through notes, documents, and literature. And what may be a plot element or character information in a text can also lead to clues to progress the story or solve a puzzle. Does reading ever overstay its welcome? Maybe, but who's to say? What grabbed me so forcefully during my playthrough were the somber and fatalistic character dynamics. There's a story beat in which Elster and Ariane share a dance, a fleeting moment of the past where they were happy and things were simple, and it hit me so hard in the gut I'd forgotten a video game could rock me that hard since you know who died in you know what Final Fantasy title. 
Many times during my initial playthrough, I kept wondering whether or not I was dreaming as deeply as the characters seemed to be. This was only further enforced when I arrived at that oh-so-notorious post-credit title in which the narrative forced me to question everything I'd seen up until that point, and then basically threw the true third act at me. I'm sure many gamers might have missed it, but I spotted that missing red glare in the eye on the title screen as soon as I saw it. I was immediately wondering whether Elster had regained or remembered her humanity. Had she broken free of her persona now that the red spot in her eyes so associated with surveillance had vanished? Had she regained her independence? And would she truly see through her goal even though every character at every opportunity warns her not to continue? Have you ever heard the phrase, don't ask questions because you may not like the answers you find? I won't go through all of the endings. Even though I announce spoilers, I'd rather leave that experience up to you if you're watching this and still on the fence about playing Signalis. It's magic, and I wouldn't want to ruin that. Signalis will certainly encourage continued dissection for years to come. I admire that about it. Rarely in a title are we given so much depth, so much to be unsure of as we are in Signalis. Maybe, even if Signalis is picked apart relentlessly until few details have been left to be uncovered, there will still be some morsel of information, some unknowable clue deep within Signalis' lore that players can never and will never figure out. At least, I hope so. The themes of the story provide massive insight into its identity, but as it stands right now, the strongest word I can associate with Signalis' themes is memory. Art is a common theme throughout the title, specifically in regards to the character's obsession with it. A file in the late game serves as a warning to gestalts when handling their replicas. Do not show it photographs. Do not play it music. Do not show it movies. Suppress art. In other words, do not dare remind it of whatever is left of its own humanity. And yet, that's exactly what Signalis did to me. Playing Signalis, I felt like a kid again, but with the aptitude of an adult. It was like a fever dream of an experience, something I, nor the characters, could define or explain. All I knew, like those characters, is that during my enjoyment of the art, something was very much awakened inside of me. Signalis triggered a sense of separation anxiety in me as soon as I finished it. I had to get on with my day, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. I felt like a replica who'd seen a piece of art and had now become unstable because of it. I was distracted by it for the rest of the weekend, unable to perform the tasks I was so accustomed to doing because I was so struck by what I'd experienced. At various moments during my initial playthrough, I had to stop to reflect in the awe I felt that something so new felt like going back home to a place I'd been before. When the Moonlight Sonata played during a save room expedition, I experienced a wave of emotion not unlike I imagined some of the replicas might have felt. Something that triggered a feeling so deep within me, so strong that I remembered the powerful draw of these types of stories during my youth. When the clock hit midnight, I was bewildered by how long I'd been playing without a break. Signalis even triggered something for me in my German learning. Between finishing manuscripts, keeping up with work, and trying to deliver videos to my new viewers, my German learning has taken a back seat, but Signalis rekindled much of my relationship with the language and, furthermore, tested what I'd remembered. I was thrilled I'd deciphered a lot of what Signalis presented in the German language, fleeting as it may have been. That gave me a sense of satisfaction I haven't felt in a while. My few Twitch viewers know whenever I've completed a game once or twice, I tend to replay it again in German. I'll be doing the same for Signalis. I couldn't help but feel a sense of my own dwindling youth when I read about the art labeled as distractions and how they're no longer acceptable for the characters in the story, how they've lost their unique identities to live a life of uniformity to serve their organization, and how they'd lost a part of themselves. These are not people. They're work-focused androids with faint glimmers of personality. I began to wonder if I'd lost a part of myself somewhere along the way, something Signalis was reminding me of. Just like the enemies in Signalis, things inside of me that I hadn't felt in a long time were coming back to life. During one of my attempts at a puzzle, I found myself staring at the screen for a moment, my head resting in my hands, the controller sitting idle on my desk, scrutinizing a pattern and considering my options. I experienced tension knowing I'd have to navigate a certain area I had earlier had confidence in because this time I'd have to do it with no resources. Early on in my initial playthrough, I scrambled for a sticky notepad and a pen to jot down the pattern I needed to print on a particular keycard. That is, until I received the eidetic module. These habits felt like a return to form I very much needed, a rekindling of a neural pattern. As I write this, I wonder, when games are remade and copied, does something about them die even though they retain some of the memories of their original incarnations? 
I thought about replicas and their original counterparts retaining memories of something once unique and individual and their offshoot struggling to come to terms with what made them so distinctive in the first place. I kept thinking about the soothing items given to the replicas and how Signalis was doing the very same for me. Signalis triggered genuine emotion in me, feelings I haven't had while playing a video game in longer than I can remember. This was like video game therapy, exploring trauma and memory to peel back the layers of the onion that is my taste for narrative and video game experience. To say it was enlightening would be an understatement. I can't say for sure that this will be all I say about Signalis, but it will be for the time being. Did I have some issues with it? Sure, but right now, I can't remember any of them. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe right now, I want to hold on to the promise that the game and I made. Maybe we are all on a journey, yearning to seek someone or something in a photograph like Ariane, chasing after some experience that we can't seem to find, but if we look hard enough, it's there. Playing Signalis is like remembering the old days. In a world of remakes and reimaginings, the experience I was seeking was right here in this quaint game. Maybe Signalis is a reminder of where we've come from, how our memories affect us, and maybe where we're going. Signalis is a wonderful reminder that graphics are no substitute for an enthralling narrative and gameplay. It's a throwback to when we were forced to fill in the blanks with our imagination. It's a memory of what it's like to be both simultaneously disturbed by and in love with something. A memory of what survival horror once was, and a memory of what captivated me about it so long ago. Then again, maybe I'm just suffering from pareidolia. I have to go now. I'm going to play Signalis again. Auf Wiedersehen. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, survival horror fans, or people who just like storytelling. I hope my content was more presentable this time around. I called up my IT professional, who also happens to be my best friend, and he got my 3090 fired up and crunching footage. I'll be back with more soon. Be nice to each other in the comments. Thanks for watching.